Hey guys, it's Stephen Wagner with the Tech Journal at www.stephenwagner.com. In today's video, we're going to be setting up a PFSense firewall. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is I've got a couple videos coming up where I needed to have a firewall isolated in a, uh, I guess you could call it a test network um, to provide internet access to a LAN. So in order to do so, I need to get a firewall set up. PFSense is free. It's based off of FreeBSD and uh, it's the perfect candidate to do what we needed to do. So uh, let's get started. So what I did here is I uh, created a virtual machine on my ESXi hosts called TNPFSense. That stands for Testnet PFSense. Um, this is just a small little virtual machine. Uh, if we jump into manage virtual machine settings, um, you'll notice I just configured it. Uh, I think I set it up with one CPU. We've got four gigs of RAM, one processor, uh, 40 gig drive, then provisioned of course. Uh, set up a CD DVD drive. We uh, downloaded the ISO to one of our data stores and um, connected it to the CD-ROM. Um, now for this machine we have two NICs. Um, you can see that the first adapter goes to a network called um, 1.2. This is one of my uh, internet connections here in my home lab. Um, and uh, the one thing I did do is when I was creating this virtual machine um, it defaults to E1000. Um, we don't want that. We want VMX Net 3 as the network adapter uh, for the virtual machines. And then, of course, I created uh, Network Adapter 2, which goes to our test network. One monitor. It's pretty much good to go. So we'll just go ahead and boot that up. And you'll notice that it uh, automatically boots. You don't have to hit anything on the bootloader. So while we're waiting for this to boot, we need to go into a little bit of our network design and setup. So um, I've got a notepad here. We're going to call this testnet1, right? Um, we're going to go ahead and choose, uh, call it tmpfsense. We're going to give this the LAN IP of 192.168.10.1. We'll choose that as our subnet. We're going to do a 24. So of course the subnet's going to be 255.255.255.0. And I'm also going to use this document for any future servers that we deploy on this network. So now that we boot it to the installer, we'll actually just jump in here and we'll hit accept. We'll choose to install PFSense. We'll go ahead with the default key map. And we'll go with the auto ZFS. <laughs> you can see it's not too difficult to uh, to get this installed. It's been a while since I've actually done this, so uh, I'm I'm while I kind of am familiar with the process, it's been a couple of years since I've deployed one, so just bear with me. I want to make sure that I'm not skipping any steps that are important. A lot of this stuff you don't have to touch. Now, virtual device type, here you can set some stuff up. So if you were installing this onto physical hardware, you could actually configure it to uh, use RAID Z1, Z2, Z3 with the uh, ZFS file system. You can uh, set up mirrored partitions. Now, in my virtual environment, the storage is backed by RAID, so we don't need to have the actual virtual machine or PFSense doing any type of RAID or uh, mirroring as it's all protected by the, um, the host hypervisor in storage. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, destroy the virtual machine. And while we're waiting for this to uh, run, it, what, what's one thing that's really interesting about uh, PFSense is that uh, it's free and it's quite powerful. Um, there's quite a bit of modules that you can load into it too that actually gives you functionality uh, that would typically come with an enterprise grade firewall. So it's great if you're on a budget for your home network, your home lab, or a small home based business. So as you can see, the uh, installer just finished asking us if we want to open up a shell, make any modifications. We don't need to, we're just keeping it simple. So we're just going to go ahead and select no. And while it's doing this, since it's installed, I'm going to go in and I'm going to detach the ISO. I 
hope I did that in time. I hope it's not going back into the installer. And there we go. So pretty much right now it's asking us uh, detected some of the network configuration. We've got the valid interfaces. Um, and then it's asking us if we need to configure any VLANs. In my environment, we don't. Now we need to enter the WAN interface. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go back here. I'm going to go to manage the virtual machines. And the WAN has a MAC address that ends in F54E. So inside of the list here, we've got uh, VMX net zero with F54E. And so it's asking us to enter the WAN interface name. So we'll put in VMX net or VMX zero. Enter the LAN, which is VMX one. And then it tells us that the interfaces are going to be assigned as follow. That all looks good. So we'll hit yes to proceed. And it's just doing a lot of its first time configuration and setup. You'll notice how easy this is so far. It takes minutes to configure and set up, install. And once the firewall is done, you simply uh, join a computer to the network, log into the web-based interface with the default username and password, and uh, you can configure various things. I think for the most part, uh, when you when it gets to the point that we're at right now that you're looking at on the screen, um, it's actually ready to rock and actually providing internet access to the land. So. Um, we'll just jump over here and um, next we'll configure it with the Windows 10 VM. Alrighty, so what I did is I just spun up a brand new Windows 10 instance. You'll see right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this virtual machine to connect to the PFSense um, firewall and configure it via web interface. So now what we're going to do here is uh, we've have we configured a static IP? No, we have not configured a static IP. So what we're going to do is, uh, using the console here, we're going to choose uh, number two to set the interface's IP address. And we're going to configure the internal LAN, which is number two. And we're going to configure it with an IP address of 192.168.10.1. And the subnet bit count is going to be 24. And since this is the LAN, we're not going to configure a gateway on it. And we're not going to touch anything to do with IPv6. Now, if you wanted to use PFSense as a DHCP server, then you would choose yes. Um, a DHCP server will assign IPs to um, devices on your network. Now, the purpose that I'm using this for is to act strictly as a gateway and firewall. Um, my future plans are to actually have a Windows Server 2022 uh, virtual machine providing Active Directory, DNS, and more. So in my case, I'm going to select no. So the IP configuration is complete. And so what we're going to do on this virtual machine is we're going to go in and configure an IP address on one of the interfaces. So right here we have the uh, IP address of the firewall. So when we configure the network interface on the Windows 10 virtual machine, we need to have it on the same network. So we're going to do 10. Dot, let's do 50, and we need to make sure we have it on the same subnet. And of course, the gateway is going to be the PFSense firewall, which is at 192.168.10.1. And we'll also configure it as the primary DNS server. So that's showing online. I'm just going to open up a command prompt and we'll just try pinging the PFSense firewall. And it replies, which means that we've got communication to it. And now we're going to open up 
a web browser to the PFSense firewalls web based interface. Now we're using SSL and this is a self-signed certificate so we're going to get this warning. We're just going to hit continue anyways. Now if you go to the PFSense website you're going to notice that we've got uh, default username and password on a fresh install is admin and PFSense. So that's what we're going to use to log in. And now we're here. And we're just going to go through the first time configuration here. So for general information, we're just going to call this TN PF sense. We're going to call this stevenwagner.com. And we can set the time zone to minus seven. So configure one interface, this is where you configure the IP for the internet facing interface. On our side, we're just gonna be using DHCP, but if you had a static IP, this is where you would configure it. For most of this, you don't have to touch much else. And this is just a confirmation on the configuration of the LAN interface, so this looks good. It's gonna ask us to set a password. And actually, while we're at it, I'm just gonna to try to go to Google and see if it's actually acting as a NAT router yet. Doesn't look like it is. So it's up and running. We'll just accept the terms. And it looks like we're good. And we're on Google. So it is now acting as a firewall. So that's pretty much it. Um, you're up and running now. You have a PFSense firewall. Um, and if you want to do anything fancy, you could just use these menus here. Now, we'll just go through some of this quick stuff. You can go inside of some of the advanced settings and choose the uh, protocol for the web-based interface. Um, under system and advanced, there's also firewall and NAT. And this is where you can configure some of the firewall options. And somewhere in here, I'm not too sure if it's in this menu or not, but Somewhere we should be able to configure port forwarding firewall NAT. Yeah, so here you can configure port forwarding one to one NAT and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty powerful interface. I guess you just need to uh, check out some of the documentation, see what you can do. Um, but um, yeah, it's pretty much that easy. And that's what's great about it. And so for the specific test environment that I'm creating, I now have a functioning firewall and router to provide internet access to the, uh, the test network. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.